Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Um, let me just say right off the bat, last night was difficult. If you watched last night's episode, uh, got a little emotional near the end. Um, didn't expect that, but that is how it is. Um, I feel a little better now, but still not. I mean, with everything that's going on, if you're watching this, I applaud you because you're breaking away from something that's happening right now in the news that we all know about. So uh, I just appreciate you just breaking away and just just getting away for an hour. Kind of take a breather. It's actually pretty healthy to get away from the news, no matter what it is. I mean, for months now, we've been dealing with the coronavirus, all that news. So I think that's why, you know, I've gotten a lot of people watching two, three, four, five, eight hundred people watching individual episodes because it's just they're just tired of coronavirus news. But now there's new news, um, which is really old news, and we should be past that. But uh, I appreciate anybody who's watching right now. Hey, um, type in your name. Well, you don't have to type in your name. I know who you are. Just type in where you're from. Just put it right there in the comments. If you're watching this and you're on Wine with Dave Facebook page, and at the top left corner it says Happening Now, uh, just scroll below that post. I know that's a live post, but there's another live post we can actually leave comments on. I don't know why Facebook does that. It's You go live and it like throws your live feed way down, halfway down your page. It should be right at the top. Some people, they say it shows up at the top, so that's cool. Um, we have some people here. We've got Rick, and I already put that up here. He's watching Wine with Dave over the Dropkick Murphys at Fenway Park. Yeah, that's loyalty. Consistency. There you go. Uh, nice montage of artists. That's your app for the night. Yeah, that's um, that was cool. I go to Giphy.com, G-I-P-H-Y, and I find gifts that relate to the guest of the night. So I put that in. Um, so who do we have else? Kayla Rivera Rodriguez, Millsboro, Delaware. Nice seeing you again, Kelsa. Kelsa, can I call you Kelsa? Kelsa, thank you for coming on again. I remember you from the other night. Thank you so much for watching, uh, breaking away from the news to just kind of chill out. Tonight's guest is going to show you some beautiful things that are happening in the world of art. So I know there's a lot of ugliness out there, but uh, this is good. This is good that you're here just to break away. It's only an hour, but uh, I guarantee I am going to I'm going to uh, make it fun for you. So um, she says yes. Thank you so much. Uh, also, I'm I'm thinking of doing something a little different. If you haven't filled out the um, and if you scroll if you keep scrolling down after the show's over, you'll see where I say, "Hey, I need your help." It's a survey. Please fill it out. But I've been learning that some people. Actually, a lot of people are like, they like a lot of the segments. They're not super, super excited about this segment, the intro. They want me to be um, real, but it's hard to be real because if I do, I'll just stop crying. So, uh, which I did last night. If you Again, if you weren't watching, you have to do that. Yeah, a good hour. You're right. Thank you so much. So, but I want to do something different because I'm listening to feedback. And one thing is if you have an iPhone... You can come on the show, okay? Uh, I can give you my number, and I have a guest that comes in through Skype. It's it's a process. We go over questions and everything, and I come up with an ad and promote it and the whole thing. But I'm thinking of, like, very impromptu stuff. I can give you my phone number. You have to have an iPhone. And you can call me, and I will – you click on the little uh, video camera app, which is the FaceTime and all of a sudden, it's split screen, and then there you are. So you can come on live, live. So I'm thinking of trying that. I'm thinking of trying that. Don't cry, Dave. I know. <laughs> I won't. I'll promise not to. Well, I try not to. Uh, so I'm thinking of doing that, you know, and maybe just talking to people. It's good to talk to people. I'd I don't know what I'm going to call that segment. Maybe 
a two-way street. I don't know, because now I get to talk and listen. So uh, anyway, without further ado, let me get into one of the most popular, by far, people says, do not get rid of this segment. Everyone loves the interviews, and they also love this segment, which is called, Did You Know? And I like Did You Know, because Did You Know educates. All right, ready? Are we ready for Did You Know? And I've narrowed it down from not four interactive questions, but just three, okay? Just three. Um, Did you know that all the planets in our solar system can fit inside of Jupiter? Did you know that? Shares Jupiter. This is really cool. Uh, Oh, we got people coming on. Donor. Roan Midler, donor. Do it. He wants me to cry. I did last night. You weren't listening. I bawled last night. Don't give me the opportunity to go live. I know you'll want to do that. That's a great idea. Thanks, Corey. Kelly, I love it. Yeah, so at the end, I might try it. You know what? I might try it. You'll uh, FaceTime me. But we're in this segment. An area of the sun's surface to the equivalent of a postage stamp, okay? If you just took a postage stamp size of a chunk of the sun, that brightness is as bright as 1,500,000 candles. A postage stamp. Imagine the sun. Did you know that natural gas has no smell? They actually, the odor is artificially added so that people are able to identify when it leaks. I bet you didn't know that. Did you know that rainbows can only be seen in the morning or late afternoon? The sun needs to be less than 40 degrees in the horizon. Acorns are poisonous to humans. If eaten, it can cause damage to your kidneys. Don't eat acorns. I did not know that. Did you know that? Try not to cry, the two-way segment. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's what I call it. The next segment, try not to cry. And I try to make you cry. Um, Orology is the study of mountains. Have a look at mountains and think they're so beautiful. You're being orologist. Only pregnant female polar bears hibernate. That's right, not all polar bears do. And not all female polar bears, only the pregnant ones. Interesting, huh? Uh, People are talking about me crying. Nope, she's saying nope. Um, Oh yeah, acorns maybe. Um, She didn't know. Did you know that two out of five people marry their first love? Two out of five. 30% of people refuse to sit in public toilet seats. I bet you didn't know that. 30%. Here's the first interactive. Get ready with your pencils or your fingers. Start getting ready to type. People in what country read more books per capita than any other country? People in what country? Just write books and the country. When you drink wine, you gotta squint. Did you know all the best cowboys have Chinese eyes? There are over 600 windows on the Empire State Building. Did you know a newborn kangaroo is only one inch tall? One inch, that's crazy. Here's the second interactive, ready? The Eiffel Tower is repainted every how many years? How many years do they repaint the Eiffel Tower? There are 132 rooms in the White House. And the third interactive question, mosquitoes dislike citronella because it irritates what part of their body? Okay, 
And there we go with Did You Know? I'll repeat it again. People in what country read more books per capita than any other country? Okay. Eiffel Tower is repainted every how many years? And mosquitoes dislike citronella because it bothers what part of their body? All right, let's add them up. Roan says Switzerland. The Swiss read, read more books. Rick Greenwood, people reading Sweden. Um, those are the only two that voted. The only two that voted. My mouse isn't working. This is weird. Um, you're both wrong. It's Iceland, and I knew that. They have a 0% literacy rate. Or 100%. Yeah, 100% literacy rate. Everyone can read. That's rare. But they all read. They have the Icelandic sagas that gets passed down from generation to generation. The Eiffel Tower is repainted every how many years? Roan thinks it's every 10 years. Rick says every five. It's actually seven. Every seven years. Um, mosquitoes dislike citronella because it irritates their erogenous zone. You are wrong. <laughs> mosquitoes' eyes. No, it's actually their feet. It's their feet. Citronella bothers their feet. So the whole thing with citronella smell... I think they think they're going to land on it, but if you rub citronella oil on tables, that probably is really going to help. So anyway, you tried that, and uh, you all failed. So applaud yourselves. You all failed. You didn't get it. Uh, anyway, today is May 29th, and my guest just showed up. I can see him in the green room. Uh, he's here. He is here today. He's really cool, and I thank you guys for coming and paying attention for one hour away from the madness that's out there. But today is May 29th, okay? Do you know what happened on May 29th? Does anybody know what happened on May 29th? Well, these guys didn't happen. On this day in 1952, country music legend Hank Williams and Audrey Shepard granted divorce for the second time in the final time after seven years of marriage. Their first divorce was in 1948, by the way. But they divorced in 52. But in December of 51, after allegations of mutual infidelities and the resumption of her husband's health problems, he was an alcoholic, um, Audrey called from a hotel and told Hank to be out of their Tennessee home by the time she returned. Mm. Replying to her with a seemingly prophetic statement, Hank Williams said, Audrey, I won't live another year without you. And on May 29th, today, 1952, the couple finally divorced, second time, and it was over. She was awarded the house, their child, Bo Cephas, who's Hank Williams Jr., and half of her ex-husband's future, future royalties, on the condition that she never remarry. She never remarried. Hank Williams died seven months later on New Year's Day, 1953. Audrey, I won't live another year without you. On this day. Sad. Sad but true. All right. Ready for the next segment? I want to get into this. This is cool. This guy's cool. I just met him. You know, he's already cool. But uh, my guest is... You've heard of Cubism. You've heard of Dadaism. Um, there's a lot of isms in the painting world, right? But my guest is Tonyism, a very unique postmodern abstract artist from Kansas City whose figurative paintings have primitive characters who look a bit troubled, confused, afraid, and beautiful all at the same time. Check this out.
There he is. Oh, Boo Boo. How are you, my friend? Oh, good. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem, Tony. So you go by uh, Tonyism. And That's can you explain you. Tonyism? Because I'm sure everyone's wondering what that means. Well, the, uh, the term ism is a reference of meaning the process. So it's kind of like the process of anything that you do. Uh, cubism, uh, you know, there's other terms in politics or socialism. Uh, in, in human nature, there's a thing called humanism. Uh, so it's kind of the process of learning and growing. <coughs> Mm -hmm. uh, and I, that's what I feel that I am. I'm always learning and growing. So that's kind of why I incorporated, incorporated humanism into my name uh, because I feel like I'm always growing and learning as an artist. I think that's really cool. That is really cool that you just did that. Tonyism. And that's your whole. Now, everyone in Kansas City knows you as Tonyism, right? Yes, they do. Uh, when I initially started out as an artist, uh, I did a show way back in uh, 2011, 2010. It might have been even a little earlier than that. At a gallery that uh, at the time was uh, up and running in Kansas City, and I was trying to come up with a uh, idea for my uh, for the show, what we could call it. You know, a lot of times artists will come up with an idea or a name, and at that time I came up with uh, uh, the term postmodern Tony Bism. And and then I, you know, went with that for a while. And then I thought, well, postmodern is kind of redundant. And we hear that a lot. So I dropped that. And then I had Tony Bism. But a lot of people were uh, getting my name a little confused. And they were calling me Tony Bism. And so it sounded, <laughs> it's, that's what they thought my last name was. So I thought, well, let's just drop the B and go with ism. And I thought, because that's really what it is about. Is, uh, art is like any other uh, medium, just like if you're a musician, you're always growing and developing your your skill and your craft of learning to play the guitar, the drums, and songwriting and whatnot. Well, an artist, you know, they learn how to paint, they learn color palette, uh, they develop, you know, and they grow. Uh, and so that's why I came up with that, and that's why I use it. I I like to think that I'm always improving and getting better as an artist. So I think that the ism part is what is significant in that respect. You know, that's cool because I, I, I follow a lot of artists, painters, and when they're early on in their craft, technically they might be good, but when they do a series of paintings, it, it's kind of a mishmatch. It's kind of all over the place. But your style is all, it, I'm not saying it all looks the same, but it all looks the same. It looks like it's from the mind of one person, and you are absolutely refined your style and that takes years and I, I gotta hand it to you I know how difficult that's gotta be so great job I've already had some people comment on the video very cool says Rick Kayla says wow love it so yeah he's gonna and, and Tony Tonyism is going to show some of his paintings on on film right you're gonna show that right now not right now but I'm gonna ask some questions yeah yeah, I brought um, some smaller paintings of mine. I have some images of some of my artwork to show. Yeah. Sure. So tell me about your process. How do you go about opening up a canvas? It's all white, and then it becomes something unique. Well, you know, uh, being an artist, it's it's kind of like a, I have a friend that's a musician, and, and I asked him one time how does he write songs and come up with it. A lot of times you'll hear the rhythm, uh, the guitar, the, the chords in his mind. And then he'll, once he puts it down to the guitar and he starts playing it, he'll come up with the words. Mm -hmm. uh, you, and that's kind of with art. Uh, the canvas is there, but the, the idea comes from the mind. So, you know, I, a lot of times my mind... My mind is always thinking of ideas. I think that's what makes somebody who's creative, creative. You have to always constantly be thinking about imagining the way you're going to do something, how you're going to uh, write a story or paint a painting or, mm. or compose a piece of music. Uh, so the canvas is the, is the piece, is a tool that I use to express that. Mm -hmm. uh, along with everything else I use, the paint, the paintbrush, but the canvas is just one element. So... A lot of times I will just, you know, observe things in the world and I base my artwork 
on partially on that, but on a lot of my emotions. I, my artwork is pretty intense. I would, I guess I could say a mm-hmm. lot of people have commented how my artwork's really intense and has a lot of emotion. So I, I would say my artwork's more from the emotions. Some artists paint, uh, you know, they, they do political commentaries with their art. Some artists paint the, the time, you know, the culture that they're from. I, my art is from the emotions. So I can kind of feed off of that uh, and, and translate into art. And I've been pretty fortunate uh, as being able to do that. Yeah, because I've seen that. It looks like they're, and it's figurative. So it's like figurative. Yes. Ab- it's not truly abstract, right? Because you can make out what's going on. That there's, there's characters in every one. And they're either angry, confused, upset, or you don't know what the emotion is. But I think it's fascinating. It really sucks you in. Um, but, you know, like a musician, sometimes they say, hey, this song just came to me. I, I woke up in the middle of the night. It just came to me. It was all done. Everything. Vocals, yeah. harmony, chord changes, bridge, chorus, everything. Uh, does that ever happen to you? Or do you feel like you've got to start laying some background, some 3D elements and some tape and cardboard and charcoal and then see where it goes. Do you just kind of do that? Is that your style? Well, you know, uh, I, it's a little bit of both. Sometimes I uh, will come up with an idea or an image in my head and it'll be very clear and I'll have a lot of clarity and then I can just go down to my studio and start painting and, and you know, it just kind of materializes. Yep. And then some paintings I'll just kind of you know, I'll go down in my studio and I won't really have an idea and I'll I'll be feeling a certain way and I'll start painting and it'll just develop as I go. So it's a little bit of both. Uh, I would say that most of my artwork, for the most part, is instinctual. In other words, I do, even though I may have an idea, I, I might change that as I'm going through the process. It may go in another direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a very big, real possibility. So uh, what I was, second question here is your paintings are abstract, also figurative. Uh, Oh, I already asked that. (laughs) Troubled, angry. Where's your inspiration come from? Do you study? Do you go, are you one of those guys that go to a coffee shop and just study people's character and emotions and go, I want to put that in a painting? I I feel like you study people. I I base some of my artwork. Uh, I've done paintings uh, in the past where they were based on somebody that I knew, and I remember uh, an interaction I had with an individual, whether it be a good interaction or a bad. You know, somebody having a bad day. Uh, but a lot of my uh, artwork is for my own emotions. So if I'm having a bad day, or I'm you know for whatever reason, you know, if I'm not feeling good or it's, I'm having a lot of stress in my life. Yeah, that can translate into my art. Uh, mm-hmm. And you, you are right. I don't do a lot of uh, abstract. I do like the figurative because there is abstracts kind of left open to to the interpretation of the observer. But with figurative art, you can give them kind of an idea of what it is about. You may not mm-hmm. reveal everything, but it, it opens it up. And I think it makes it more interesting than just pure abstract. Uh, yeah, because... In my opinion. Yeah, I mean, just like a movie, if it was just nature, nature documentaries, they don't do much for me. But if there's a hero in the show, then, you know, that's what makes the big bucks in movies. So uh, oh, your paintings, all your characters are heroes in some way. Uh, you have a fascination with cats, though, I, I must add. <laughs> You've got about 10 that break away from these, these twisted people to all of a sudden cats. Explain yeah. that. Well, you know, uh, my wife is a cat lover, and I, I started doing some paintings for her because she wanted to decorate her office where she works with some of my with paintings. And so I initially did that, and I was kind of did some early on. I, I was doing sketches of my – we have two cats ourselves, and so mm-hmm. I did some sketches of them. I, I, I've never done any other animals just for the simple fact that I, had, I didn't find them as interesting as cats – Cats are very independent and they have a lot of personality and they're kind of like, you know, they do their own thing. You really can't, you know, dogs are very loyal uh, and you can kind of do whatever you want and they want to please you. But cats, they don't, 
they're not really concerned about pleasing you. And so I kind of liked that. I was attracted to that notion of, you know, they're just their own boss, essentially, and they do what they want. They are. Uh, what I like to do is I, I, I never want to do anything clear and, clear and simple. So I always make my cats look a little out there and the, and I do, you know, the shapes and I make, I want to make them look as interest, interesting as their personalities would be. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's kind of what I went with that. And I'm a very, uh, I'm a, I guess I could be considered a very obsessive, uh, artist. I'll, I'll do hundreds and hundreds of paintings on one subject matter and then I'll stop abruptly and I'll move on to something else. Wow. And I guess that's kind of what I did with the cats. <laughs> yeah. They, you did. You, someone had to like pull you back. Tony, stop. Enough well, yeah, my wife got tired and she almost proclaimed herself, uh, not a cat lover anymore when the cat painting started hanging all over the wall and everything. So yeah, I had to yeah, slow yeah. down on that. Um, one of the, one of the listeners tonight, uh, is there a strong art community in Kansas city? There's a, yeah, Kansas city is a smaller city. We don't have, you know, we're not the size of say New York or Chicago or, or you know, LA or, or cities like, uh, you know, in, in France and Germany, like, uh, you know, Paris and London, where you have big art communities and, and a, a history of art like you do here. But Kansas City has a pretty good uh, art community. I would say it's probably a little tougher if you're going to be an artist in Kansas City. Yeah. Uh, because I think there's a disp disproportion of artists as opposed to uh, artists, collectors, uh, people that appreciate the arts. Um, it's not to say they're not here, but uh, as far as people that actually buy art or, or you know, really uh, are attracted to art, it's probably a smaller population here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if anyone has questions for Tonyism, just ask away. That was a good question about the art scene there. But Tony, right about now, I think we'd like to see some of your paintings. Let me show you. Yeah, just bring them on out. Some, yeah, I have some images I did. Uh, they're done in mixed media, and they're done... Uh, and uh, acrylic paint done in uh, oil stick and pastel and charcoal and just about any everything I could grab at hand. I did a series in 2018 called the Heads series, and it was basically uh, pictures of heads of, of every various type and imagination you could come up with. And I uh, my goal was to do a thousand of them as a challenge on uh, Instagram, and I was trying to do it to, just to see if I could do it. I ended up doing. Uh, I, I lost count at about four, a little over 400, so I'm not sure how many I did total. I never have been able to do a full count. Good for you. Uh, but I'll show you some here if I can get So it. this is from the series called Head. Yeah, from 2018. Oh, nice. And so this one's done in uh, basically acrylic, pencil, charcoal. I do it in, uh, some of them even have collage on them so I'll do cut out on them and everything do you st they, they look very primitive like they'd almost be uh cave drawings do you study a lot of primitive yeah, history I wanted, them to be, I wanted the artwork to be very raw and uh, have a lot of emotion and, and a lot of tension in the faces because you know when we communicate with each other we're looking at our eyes we're looking at people's mouths when we talk so that's how we communicate with our faces. We don't turn our backs when we talk to each other. We face each other. So the face is the way we identify people, and that's how we remember somebody. If, you, if somebody's telling you something funny and they're smiling, you're going to have a good memory of them. But if they're yelling at you, you're probably going to have a negative memory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I wanted these faces to show a lot of that. That is cool. Can you angle it down? So the glare comes off. Just just angle it back like that. Like this? There you go. Yeah, and move it closer to the camera. Yeah, that is. Well, now, are they complete right now, or are you still working on them? No, they're complete. They're complete. And they, uh, here's one that's probably not as intense, and it's a little more pleasant. It's. Some, when I do female paintings, uh, images of the females, I made them a little less. Yeah. So that's kind of. They're more beautiful. Your male figures are like, they have the issues, I, I right? I put a little more of raw energy into the males. 
just because by nature, males are, you know, we, our bodies, the way we look, we're more utility vehicles. A woman it looks more like a luxury car or has smooth lines. And, you know, guys are kind of, you know, we're kind of rough around the edges most of the time, but women are more smooth and elegant. So I try to make the females look that way. Yeah, speak- I don't want to make them all, you know. That's cool. Was he saying hello? There, there's, there's definitely uh, humor in, in your stuff too. Oh, I mean, yeah, some of it's funny. That, yeah. That's the name of that one. Hello, yeah. Yeah, some of the stuff is very funny, and it's I, like, why did I do he try say to that? Add a little, I try to add a little bit of humor in my art because uh, you know, there's all we have multiple uh, emotions. We have a humorous side. We have a. a a mean side, we have a jovial side, we have a sad side, you know, so we have all these emotions. Yeah. And we, and the way you see that emotions is in our face. Wow. This one's a little more abstract, but I still try to, uh, you know, make it to where you can see the face in it. And I put three eyes in that one and the title of it is See Me, See Me, said the little boy. You You know, know, that's what it is. So some of your paintings look like you're a little kid trapped inside of a big man's body and you were let loose with a bunch of crayons, but you're, uh-huh. you're, it's innocent, but not innocent enough. It's almost like you've been trained, like you're a, like you're a 50 year old, little five year old, and then you yeah. know what to draw. So it's really intense. They do look well, like, yeah, they, they look like crayon drawings on a wall. Yeah, I'm 52 and I, I like to think that I'm only two. Uh, and I, you know, I, I really do. And, and there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, I, I don't, I, I think as we get older, we want to be young again, you know, not necessarily physically, uh, but I think mentally and, and, uh, you know, when you're a child or a young person, you have no worries, there's no stress in your life. And, you know, as you get older, you kind of long for those days. Yeah. Uh, but also you feel good when you don't have those worries, when you live for the moment. And we do, as children, we live for the moment. As adults, you and I both are thinking, okay, we got to get this done tomorrow and the day after. But when you're a child, you just think of the moment. What am I doing right now? So I do put a lot of that into my artwork. I got one more I'll show you. Sure. This one's untitled, but it was kind of more a little intense. Nice. And then, oh, and move it over to your left, because we can only see half of the screen. There we go. Now, is that on watercolor paper? It's on, uh, some of them were on archival watercolor paper. Some of them I did on, uh, I got a big roll of backdrop paper, which is used for photography. And it was, I got it from a curator of a gallery that I did a show at uh, back in 2018. And so I cut it up. It was a huge roll, and it's really heavy, heavy-duty paper, and it's pretty good to use for that medium for wet, for wet medium, and anything else. So a lot, a lot of it's on that. Now you're selling a lot because even today you told me that it's going to be tight, but you'll try to run out and get in time for the interview. But that you were delivering yes. a handful of paintings to customers. Yeah, I did. I had to deliver. I had to deliver some paintings. So I have been doing pretty well selling paintings. I uh, I sell a, a mixture of my larger paintings with these smaller pieces that I did, uh, and so I'm, I've been pretty fortunate in that regards. That's good. What's a typical uh, painting go for? Something that's 16 by 20. Does it change depending on what you put a value on it, or is it based on size? It's it's a little bit of both. Uh, I, I sometimes I put a, a higher value on a painting that I personally think I invested more of my time and emotion into. Mm. Uh, some paintings can take a, they may look like they didn't take very long to paint, but sometimes they took longer than paintings that look like they might have taken longer uh, because I had to maybe step back and maybe I kind of had a, a mental block i guess you'd say kind of like writer's block where i had to stop and sure okay yeah. what am i, what am I going to do here what am i going to go with it uh now these paintings i did on paper you know i i, I would do one and then i was kind of done with it if i didn't like it i couldn't really go over it and correct it because paper you really can't do much with it if you try to erase it or take the paint off you're going to tear the paper up so if i really didn't like a painting i would just 
tear it up and start over. Uh, but on my larger canvas paintings, I don't know if you can see some behind me on the wall there, but those are a lot of those I've done one, one, two, three revisions of, and they, they have layers. So, if, and those are the ones, if I've done that, if I don't get in one try and I don't do it, then the ones I've taken more time and I put more value. And so the, the price of the painting would be based on that. And uh, it, it does go by size too. The, the bigger the painting, the more it's, it would obviously cost. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. There, there's no real formula to that, but I, I, that's how I do it as an artist. Some artists are a little bit more that I've talked to are a little more pragmatic and they kind of have a formula based on how much time and how much uh, the uh, materials they put into and all that. I don't, I do that a little bit, but I kind of base them more on how much I emotionally invest in the art piece. Yeah. And I like your underpaintings. Uh, is that the, is that what you call that? The underpainting where it's like, maybe it's an older painting, but then you paint over it. You can yeah. still see the streaks and paint strokes of other yeah. art, but it really gives a, a depth to it. It is, has a little bit of an attitude. It's not all clean. It's a great yeah, background I, I, for your characters. Yeah, I do that intensely. I used to, uh, early on, I would paint over the painting completely, but then after a while, I would sometimes leave parts of the painting that was on it previously uh, visible because I thought it added to the, you know, I, I, I kind of relate back to that whole process of growing and, and, and getting better and becoming better as an artist and, and you know, moving on through my life. So, obviously... You and I as people, who we become is based on our experiences in life as we get older and we become who we are. You know, in, in 10 years, we'll probably be different because of all the things that's happened from now and in 10 years from now. And so that's how I value my art in that regards. I do leave that in there. I let it come through. And I like it. And sometimes it adds, a, a, in, as far as the art itself is concerned, it adds an element to the composition of the piece itself. Mm hmm what is your mission as an artist? What's your, what do you wave a flag for? What are, what are you thinking? I, you know, I don't, I don't have any kind of political commentary with my art. I don't have a, I don't really tap into any kind of cultural uh, goal with my art. But what I do hope with my art is that if, if people are going to view it, it draws an emotion out of them. In other words, if you look at one of my faces paintings and you if it makes you happy or it makes you frightened then I've done my job as an artist because I've drawn that emotion from you if it if it confuses you or if it it makes you curious then I've done my job so really it's about the connection with me the artwork and the viewer and I and that's kind of I I can give you an example I did a painting one time uh and it's a very, it's abstract, but it's a face, but it, you can see the face in it, but it's very, uh, it was very primitive in style and it was very rough. And it was one of my first large pieces. And this lady walked up to and looked at it and she, she was with another woman. And one woman liked it. She, I really like this. And the other lady said, oh, I don't like it. It's ugly. And, you know, I was, it was early on in my career and I was a little, you know, I had a thin skin at that time and I was, I felt, you know, I was mad and felt bad. And I thought, well, how, how dare I say that? And then after I realized, well, okay, wait a minute, that's what art's about. Yep. I'm not really painting a painting just so everybody can say, wow, that's great. Yep. Paintings, paintings like a good song, a good painting is like a good song. It draws an emotion from you. You listen to music because it creates a certain emotion. Well, artwork is just like that. Reading a book, you know, we read certain, we read, you know, scary but horror books because we want to be scared, you know. So we're trying to find that emotion. So uh, I act, I started thinking, you know what? If it's ugly too, it's ugly too. And I actually titled the painting "Ugly," and I left it at that. And it, and it, it gets a lot of feedback. I do it in shows. I still have it. Uh, I've had a couple people interested over the years to purchase it, but no one's bought it yet. But People like it, and it draws a lot of uh, uh, curiosity. People talk about and what it, what is it referencing? But yeah. that's what I want. That's what I want as an artist. So I, I don't really want to create a political uh, commentary with my art, or I don't want to, you know, focus on one type of cultural aspect in our community. I want to draw the emotion from an individual 
with my art. It just can't be boring. That's the enemy, right? Yes. Yeah. It's got it's got yeah, to it's... evoke an emotion. Um, do you feel like because you paint things, your figurative abstract work creates an emotion in people, whether they laugh or giggle or they or they're just unsettled? Uh, do you feel like you have value as an artist because of that? Yes, I do. I, 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 I really do. I think that to me is, for me as an artist, I, I value that the most. Uh, it's, I, I'm sure you've been to concerts before and you have musicians and bands that you follow and you like. You go there for that experience. You go there because there's a connection with you and that music. And you're not going to go listen to music you don't like. You're not going to, you know, so and you don't you watch certain types of movies because you like them, mm -hmm. you know, so it's the same thing. There's there's always a connection. Uh, and, I, and that's what I think my art's about. Some of my artwork I've incorporated. I did a series uh, last in 2019 called the Biobubble series. And on the back of my incorporated poems with the artwork. And it was a real positive kind of more upbeat series I did. Uh, and it was just something I wanted to try try and do uh, and see how it went. And I put these little, they were I would guess the poems could be kind of more like positive affirmations as well. Yep. But it also kind of gave the the viewer the written word, if you will. So they also saw this piece of work and they saw the the poems on the paintings. And I've done actually a lot of poems on my website. I'll do poems related to the pain, paintings. And the poems, just like anything else, it's open to interpretation. All art, art, artwork, music, you know, you can read a book and you can ask somebody else that's read it, hey, what did you think about the ending, you know, and you can get different views. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's a good thing. I think that's sure. what we need. As, as people, we're always wanting to be challenged. Uh, you know, for what you do, you want to get on here and you want to find out a little bit about me. You want to know what I'm about. Uh, and so that's what you do. And, and I'm the same way. I want to know what you're about and I want to know what this is about. And that's how we grow as people. We get, I think we become better. Uh, mm. we, be, we definitely become better learning about ourselves uh, through whatever it is we do. Yeah. Yeah. I study people. I like, I like people. I think I like them. Hey, do you think the uh, anger and the unrest that's going on right now today and uh, even since m uh, Monday with the killing of uh, George Floyd, do you think that will leak into your artwork? Not so much that you'll be drawing pictures of him, but the anger maybe and the unrest, or do you think it, it just, it's got to come from within you? Uh, well, you know, I've been, I've watched that. And like I said, I don't do the political part of it. So I, I won't do any paintings really related to that, but I, I do see the emotions in people uh, you know, the frustration and emotions and the people that are dealing with that in their community, uh, you know, the family and stuff and what they're going through and, and how they might view it as being uh, unfair and, you know, wrong and brutal and all that. And I see that. I, I, I can understand that as, a, as, you know, a person that can feel empathy, I can see what that's about. Mm -hmm. And I think it will. You know, I, I do a lot of my paintings. Uh, I try to look at the world as a whole and I don't necessarily tap into that one singular emotion about that event, but I will, I will definitely tap into, you know, how that anger comes out in us and how that we see, you know, when you watch those videos, you see those people's faces and they're contorted and they're angry and they're, they're yelling and their faces are red and, you know, you're sitting there watching it on a TV and you're thousands of miles away, but it can still have an emotion, effect, emotional effect on you. You can become, oh, yeah. you know, if you're, if I think most of us, sometimes even if we turn it off and we walk away from it, that's still an emotion and we may not realize it, but it had an effect on us. It had enough of an effect that we turned off the TV. So you're still showing some emotions, maybe not the emotions that those people are dealing with at that at that time and point, but you're still showing emotion. So yeah, I, I could do that. Uh, and I have done that. I've done that, uh, with some of my early paintings on things I've seen on TV. I put that into my artwork. I right. don't usually specifically say it's related to that event, but I draw the emotion from the event. Right. That's great. That is awesome. 
Hey, thank you so much for being on, Tony. It, it's it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank uh, you. We connected on Instagram, and it just it just worked out. And uh, I shot an invitation out, and you're like, "That sounds great," and and I fell in love with everything. So, thank uh, you, Dave. Guys, uh, right below, Tony can't see it, but Tonyism, and right below is Instagram.com postmodern Tony B. Just go to Instagram. Please follow him because. I'm not going to say he's a struggling artist because you <laughs> you just delivered a handful of paintings today. You're doing pretty well in Kansas City, but uh, yeah, just follow him. He's got some great stuff. Uh, do you ever film the process as you're painting? Because I've seen some films, brief little drawings. It'd be cool to set up a camera on a tripod and just start to finish. Yeah, I'm gonna. I've been kind of working on doing more of that. Uh... I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I want to make sure that if I do it, I do it in a way that it's informative to the viewer and that they get something from it. So I've kind of been doing bits and pieces and learning, but I do want to do, uh, do one where I maybe show the whole film, all the process all the way through and then do like a time lapse where it kind of starts out and then you speed up. Sure. Uh, un unfortunately, I'm an artist. I'm not as tech savvy as you and a lot of people. So I'm still learning how to do that aspect of it, but I am going to start doing that. And that should be uh, something I'll be doing here in the near future. Do it. We want to see it. We want to see it. Rory Hudson Butler says website question mark. What's your yeah, website? I do, have a, I do have a website. Uh, it's zero limit And, uh, it, we just updated and I did some improvements on it and uh, did a new storefront. It looks pretty good. I like it. I'm real happy with it. And uh, yeah, if you get a chance, come and check it out. What is it know. again? Zero Limit? Yeah, it's ZeroLimitCreations.com. I, uh, I can do this quick. Boom. I just typed that. Bam. ZeroLimitCreations.com. So go there. And um, that's his website. So thank you again, Tony. I wish you the best of luck. We are now connected. We're friends for life. Okay, thank you, Dave, and I appreciate you having me as a guest. Yeah, no problem, no problem. I've had a couple other people just saying some things before you go. Thanks, Tony. Keep up the great work. Uh, not tech savvy. Welcome to the club. Yeah, yeah. film your stuff. Yeah. I'd love to see that. And uh, keep painting. Keep giving us emotion on canvas. Thank you. I will. Thank you again. You have a good evening. You too. Take care in Kansas City. Bye bye. Okay. You too. Bye bye. Kansas City, one hour behind. It's uh, about 10 of 10. On a Friday night, it's 10 of 9. Tony's time. What a great guy. Really easy to talk to. Um, that's just good. That's really good stuff. Hey, so anybody want to talk to me? You want to talk to me? I had something here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, I got to, do I have to do it again? Yeah, let me do this. 401. Now this, here's my number. I don't know if I should do this now, but if you only have an iPhone, if you don't have an iPhone, you can't do it. It's, it's FaceTime and it's an experiment. Okay, so I'm willing to flop, but if you want to talk, you want to be on the show live right now, call me, hit the little video camera button once it's ringing, and then I'll FaceTime and we can talk. Tell me what's on your mind. I mean, if you don't have anything on your mind, don't call me. That's a, that's a complete waste. <laughs> All right, but I'm going to leave that there. But I am going to move over to Dave Plays With Apps. All right, so Dave Plays With Apps. What I wanted to do was Artisto... I love Artisto, okay? Artisto is kind of cool. So what you do is, yeah, you don't, you don't, you could do that if you want, but you don't have to. Um, you can click on a photo in your gallery. I'm going to click on, uh, let me see that, okay? That was from the other night when I had uh, Konstantinos on from Greece. Was he cool or what? What a cool guy, Serpent Lord. Great band. you got to follow them. Um, okay, so then you hit next. You can't see that. It's below. Let me move my my thing out of the way here. Uh, so, again, if you got something to say, we got eh, 10 minutes. You can call me in about five minutes when I'm done. 
So you hit next, and then it is what it is. You just click on Fedro, Fedro, and the Fedro filter just boom does something to your picture. You can always go back, uh, pick a bunch of them. Here's Minecraft Mania where all the pixels are grouped together in little chunks. So that's kind of ugly, but ugly is good, right? That's what Tony B says. Let me do this. Gaz Golder Live, Gaz Golder. So it processes it, takes a few seconds. That's pretty awesome. Like that. Got the Russian double headed eagle on there. Uh, this one I love, Art Nouveau. It finds the edge of the pixels and sharpens them. So you end up with these little little lines, like a like kind of a spider web effect. Let's see what it does. Cool, huh? That's cool. So this is a great little app for, um, you know, and I study apps, like, not all day long, but quite a bit, because I, I try to find ones that are funny and that you can put on your website, put anywhere. There's one I really like. Uh, this is this is interesting, Neural. This is very fat, chunky pixels. Check that out. That's intense. That's intense. Uh, where's the other? Here it is, mosaic. Mosaic. So it's little mosaic tiles. Mosaic tile. How's that? Little mosaic tiles, and then I can uh, I can share it. No, I can save it. Hit the save button. It saves it, and then you go back. And now I'll show you what it looks like. Boom! There it is right there. Yeah, yeah. So that's the W. That's the uh, the new Swedish horn. That's the wine with Dave. So uh, it is pretty amazing. I mean, look at these these the tiles in here. The detail is crazy, isn't it? Um, and it leaves white areas where they should be. I mean, it's pretty intuitive. It's got some kicking AI going on there. Uh, pretty nice. And then if you don't if you don't think that's sharp enough, you just bring it back into another program to sharpen up the edges. So it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Rick thinks it's a great app. He says, all right, so there's that. There is that. Uh, I'm going to have a closing joke. But, 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 does anyone want to call me? We've got seven minutes. It's a Friday night. I could end early. Anybody want to call me? Any takers? Any takers? If you have an iPhone, you got to have an iPhone. There it is. Is that is that big enough for you? <laughs> is that big enough for you? No takers, just call me, toll free, and uh, it's an experiment. Even if you just say hello, that's fine. Just say hello, we'll bring you on, and uh, it'll be a split screen. Nobody, nobody loves me, nobody wants to call me, no, yeah, oh well, oh well. <laughs> Tony's in the back room. Tony, you guys can't hear him. Do you have an iPhone? Oh, someone's doing it. Wait, wait, never mind, Tony. Uh, whoa, it's going crazy. There he is. Is it showing up? Hold on. Someone is FaceTiming me. Yeah! Does it work? Hi, Sal. I can tell on this side because I'm FaceTiming. You're FaceTiming me, so you only see me. Oh, my gosh. Hold on, hold on. Someone else is... I got to accept this. I got two. Oh, my gosh. I got all these people... <laughs> what, what was the question? The question is, as we get closer to June 14th, are you going to have uh, an artist on who uh, specializes in Dadaism? Why, what is June 14th? Uh, Father's Day, or right around whatever the day that oh, is. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's not what it means. Oh, I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> Dadaism, I get it. Hey, have a great weekend. Make some leather belts, why don't you? That was cool. So Rick tried to call me. Um, yeah, call me again. Call me again. I uh, it works. It's cool. Hey guys, let me know if if it um, if you could hear them. 
the thing is, his audio doesn't come through, so I literally got to go like, I got to put it over the microphone, but I don't mind. It's a quick little, uh, quick little interview. Yeah, uh, Corey says, I don't have an iPhone or I would. I know, you guys in the Google world, Android, how come you don't have FaceTime? Holy Toledo. Holy Kansas City. Oh, we got one. We got one. Who is this? Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> How are you, my friend? Good. Yeah, you got to put the hat on for that one. <laughs> I, got, I got COVID. You got COVID fever. All right, hold on. Hold that thought. All right, everybody listening right now, can you hear Rick? I know you can see his garden. Can you hear him? Anybody? Corey, can you can you see it? Somebody respond. There's a 20-second delay. Let me get rid of my phone number. Um, but that, 20 seconds, yes. Yeah, so when I ask a question, i got to wait. you got a nice little pool back there. Nice. Yeah, I got a pool. That looks pretty awesome. And you are in 29 Palms, California. That's the, they yeah, call that the... I'm in, I'm in San Diego right now. Oh, that's right. That doesn't look like your, your backyard of your house. Right. Corey says she can hear you and see you. Awesome. This is good. What are those things? Kumquats? Uh, summer squash. Summer squash. Hydroponics. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me face this way. That's cool. I, I just moved your um, your video over to the right. I love this program. So now I can have guests on on the fly. Maybe that's what I maybe that's what I call it. The next segment's called on the fly. Just call me. Dude, that's uh. So you're up on a hill a little bit, huh? Yeah. What's Mm hmm. But see, this tree grew up. It used to be, a, I could see everything. Now this grew up, so I only have a little window right here. Ah. Uh, and is that your neighbor's tree? You can't cut it? Exactly. All right. So Rick Green was an old friend of mine. He's calling from San Diego, California. Corey Burkery says, That's awesome. It's so awesome. It's You're covering her. Um, yeah. <laughs> Corey's, uh, Corey's message is being covered. That's so cool. Nice. So you're calling, I'm calling to ask. Yeah. How you doing today with all that's going on? It's gotten worse. I'm, I'm doing better, but I, I postponed watching the video, as, as I call it. It's, yeah. it's just another video. I'm like, all right, I need to watch it. And I don't know, was it good or bad? I, I just... It was good, I think, to see it because I needed to. And did last night's show. I'll tell you, it's hard to do a show and be goofy and happy and and there's all this going on. And as you saw last night's episode, I broke down at the end. So those of you out there that are watching this, which there are still people out there, um, it's still 9.59. We'll go a little late tonight. Um, watch last night's episode. If you want to see me cry, go for it. Last 10 minutes. I just didn't expect that, but I'm I'm doing better. Thanks. That's good. It it just it bothers me. We should be way past this. I know, isn't it crazy? So here's the thing, and I'll be open with you guys. Um, I've talked to a few uh, friends of color, and waiting to hear back. And there's Rody. Little Rody. Um, I'm thinking of having three days, or maybe a whole week, dedicated to yeah. racism. So kind of like I do with the ad every day, it's got, you know, Tonyism is having wine with Dave. Well, it'll be racism is having wine with Dave. Send that out, get people to watch. And I really, it can't be any white people. It's got to be someone of color who just shares their heart and soul and just says what it's like to be black right now, and especially an apparent. How do you tell your kids it's going to be okay the next day? So I think that would be needed. I think... You know, it's a good platform to have a live show and be able to talk about that. So, gutsy, gutsy, yeah. 
Yeah, people are, people are leaving hearts on that comment, so that's cool. Uh, lovely garden, though. I really I want to switch subjects. Pansies. Is that pansies? Is that what they are? I think they are. I don't even know. You got a bunch of pansies in your backyard. Pansies. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. That's good. That looks really relaxing. I love what you've done to the place, so I might lose your signal. You're going to like the way you look when you come out here. Yeah, oh, Sal just said maybe Joe Reddish will come on the show. It's so funny. So I've, this is weird. I've got you through FaceTime on the show going live, and then I get a text which shows up on your feed about someone who's a man of color who might want to come on the show. So that's cool. Oh, my wife is watching. Joanne, first time watcher. They're petunias. She says they're petunias. You're that's fine. that's You're your fine. front yard. Is that your front yard? My neighbor's saying hi, Rhode Island. <laughs> nice. Uh, let me get rid of, hold on, let me get rid of this um, wood panel. So I'm over here. Here we go. That's, that's how you do it. Nice, nice little yard. Doesn't look like San Diego. I guess I assumed it was going to be more... I don't know, lots of streets. Pa well, pavement. I'm in the burb. Green, you're in the suburbs of it, yeah. Are you near yeah. Oceanside or no? You're in San Diego. No, no, not anymore. I'm east of San Diego by like 10, 15 miles. Mm. All right, cool. Well, thanks for coming on the show. I still have listeners, so you haven't bored anybody. Yes. <laughs> thanks for having me, Dave. <laughs> it's really nice having you. Thank you for sharing your heart. <laughs> Hey, let's do a virtual clink. Oh, how do we do that? You gotta hold it in your left hand. Well, first of all, you gotta get something. Hold it in your I left hand. All right. I'll wait. It's only a live show. It's okay. There's just there's only 312 people watching. It's okay. Uh, so in your left hand, note your left hand. I gotta go this way. No, you gotta you gotta put the the glass in your left hand. Yeah. Oh, you got the shakes. Okay, ready? Three. Hold it close to your body. Like this. Ready? Three, two, one. Yeah, not bad. Not bad for a virtual clink. I had you on the show. That's cool. I mean, I've been on the show. See? Loyal listener. <laughs> Don't be afraid if you're watching. Call in next time. Yeah, do it. Do you like it? Do you feel special? <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you go on that one because I don't want it to go downhill. Um, okay, take care, my friend. Have a great weekend. Keep listening, folks. Thank Support you. Your local yes, please. Your, your local live broadcast artist. Bye bye. That was cool. It worked. It worked. I can FaceTime right through this. Yay! I love learning new things. Um,. All right, it's 10.04. I got to get you little artists to bed. And yes, I do have a joke. I do have a joke. Um, closing joke. You, got, you guys want to hear a joke? How many avant-garde conceptual artists does it take to change a light bulb? Brown. <laughs> Everybody on Monday, nine o'clock. We've got an entrepreneur on. Monday.